Joined alongside by renowned MMA trainer Faraz Sahabi. Faraz helped to lead Miguel towards the victory as Miguel won a unanimous decision victory over Antonio Buñuelos here at UFC 126. Faraz, thank you very much for your time. Let's talk about this big win that Miguel Torres had, making his UFC debut in style with a win over Antonio Buñuelos here tonight. It was a good fight. Uh, Miguel stuck to the game plan. Um, I would have liked him to, to throw a little more, you know, uh, but uh, I found that the chemistry between the two was a bit uh, it was a bit awkward, you know, their styles. They're both counter punchers. They're both waiting to counter one another. Mm -hmm. But uh, Miguel took the initiative, threw the most shots by far, and landed the most shots by far, and uh, he, he ran away with the fight. Do you feel that it was, some people were criticizing the fight, that it was a la lick, some lows in action, lack of action. Do you feel that that was more on the part of Buenuelos because it seemed like Miguel was jabbing, but there are some that feel Miguel should have been a little more active. Your thoughts? Sometimes it's just the chemistry, but I'll tell you one thing. Miguel was moving forward and he threw a lot more shots. Uh, I think Miguel was, was taking the initiative more and that's why he won. But I think they were both cautious. But Miguel threw more shots by far, and he landed more shots by far. So, you know, if, if I'm losing, it's time for me now. The ball's mm -hmm. in my court to come and get you. So um, it didn't come, you know. But uh, next time, you know, we'll figure out a, a way to up up the volume, keep the fans happy, of course. Can you tell us about how much Miguel Torres has grown since he went to TriStar up in Montreal? He had a, This is his second training camp with you, and obviously, two for two, there's something going on there at TriStar. He's doing well. He's adjusting well to the style. It's gonna. There's a lot more to come. There's a lot more adjustments to make. There's a lot more work to do. Of course, as always, you know, we always go back to the drawing board, win or lose. And uh, I think he's gonna go incredibly far, man. You're gonna see. I think he's uh, he's got a lot of tools and he's got a lot of things to for for us coaches to work with. All the coaches we have together, we have a lot of talent to work with. Who do you foresee Miguel fighting? I mean, who would you like to see him fight? I mean, a name that may be thrown out there is Scotty Jorgensen that may be on the table or a couple other fighters as well. Jorgensen would be a great fight. Uh, there's so many good fighters at 135. Bantamweight is a dynamic division. It's a great division. Lots of talent. It's just... Uh, it's just you know a matter of time for the entire world. We, the UFC fans they're, they're gonna they're gonna see more and more of it. I think it's gonna it's gonna be one of the most popular weight classes. Well, there's a lot of talent 135, but there's also a lot of talent in the welterweight division. George St. Pierre, one of your prize students, and obviously a man that you've helped to lead to victory. UFC welterweight champion. Big fight coming up in the month of April. UFC 129 that is happening out in Toronto. The biggest UFC attendance-wise in history. Can you do you have any idea of how that's gonna be? In Tell us about how training has been going so far with GSP. With GSP, I mean, he trains around the clock. It's training, rest, treatment, training again. You know, uh, the guy doesn't do anything but train. He lives like a monk. And uh, believe me, uh, come uh, in April, he's going to be better than ever as usual. He's going to be renewed as a fighter. He's going to have new tools. And uh, I think he's going to steal the show hands down. One thing that we see coming out of your camp specifically with George St. Pierre, he basically jabbed Josh Koscheck to death and almost in a submission. Miguel Torres, that jab was working for him tonight against Antonio Buñuelos. Do you feel that's such an underutilized punch in the sport of MMA? Yeah, you know, me uh, as a coach, my specialty in the stand-up is the jab. It's my, I, I put everything around the jab and uh, all my fighters, they jab. Most of them, you know, I, I center them around the jab. And uh, it's the most important punch because it opens up your offense and it keeps you uh, protected. You know, it does everything. It's 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 a, it's the punch that's the most versatile. So uh, definitely, my guys, I make them jab a lot, and uh, it's paid dividends. You know. And finally, can you give us a prediction? GSP Jake Shields, the main event UFC 129 in Toronto, going to be an electric <laughs> atmosphere. Your prediction for us? Uh, honestly, I don't do predictions. I don't have any <laughs> predictions, but. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, George is going to be prepared beyond belief. Like, as, as much as humanly possible, he's going to be prepared. Faraz, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure. Good luck to GSP coming up at the end of April. Thank you. Faraz Sahabi joining us here.